Hey guys, this is Miss Holland again. Um, let's go ahead and talk about photosynthesis part three. Get excited. Here we go. Before we start with anything, let's go over um, our main kind of characters in the play here. Now, light reaction, um, I want you guys to add to your notes. This is also known as a light dependent reaction because we depend on light in order for all this whole thing to happen. You have your reactants versus your products. So remember, when a store got, goes on sale, you react. Yay, REI is on sale. And you walk out of the sale with products. So this is what we're walking out of the store with. So we're going in with sunlight, which is actually specifically known as photons. We're also going to go in with some water. Our products that we're going to get from the sale is our two energy molecules as well as some oxygen. Now I want you to also add to your notes that, that where everything's going to be taking place. So we're actually going to specifically, the light dependent reaction will take place in the thylakoid membrane itself. And we're going to go through what's known as photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 in order to make these products. We're going to be learning a little bit more today about this thing that's known as oxidizing and then photophorization, which is actually the producing of those electrons and then the breaking apart of water into oxygen. Now the cool thing about the light dependent versus the dark reaction is that the products become the reactants. So these guys actually in turn help generate this second cycle. Okay, So the dark reaction is also known as a light independent. So we don't need light in order for this to happen. However, this does happen during the day. So just don't get confused on that. So our reactants, which we just made over here, or sorry, our reactants become our products. And so they, we're now going to take our energy as well as our CO2 that we're coming in from the atmosphere. And our products, what we're walking out of the store with, is going to be your sugar. So one molecule of glucose. This takes place, again, in the stroma, which is kind of the empty fluid region of a chloroplast. And another name for this cycle is actually known as the Calvin cycle. Also, please make sure to note what your actual formula is for photosynthesis. So here are our reactants. These are the things that we're going to react to the sale. So water, CO2, and sunlight. And then our products, what we come out of the store with, is going to be our oxygen and our sugar. Now go and take a second and grab this diagram from your notes, which we did in the last lecture. I want to add a few things here and then some extra information on top of what we've already learned. All right, so let's just review real quickly. Photons is a light energy. It is going to get attracted to the first protein here that contains chlorophyll B. That attraction of light stimulates this little ping pong reaction, and you'll learn more about the specifics in AP Bio or in college. And this energy attraction allows this molecule that's actually known as P680 okay, to get stimulated and to grab the electron that's actually generated from the water itself. This breaking apart of water to get an electron and a couple of hydrogen ions is known as oxidizing. So I want you to add this term to your notes here. So oxidizing water because we are causing oxygen to appear by breaking off the water. And remember the term ion means it's simply a charged um, particle. Now also keep in mind here that our pigments don't just have chlorophyll A or B, but we also have our little helpers here which are your accessory pigments. So when the sun is not so bright and we start cruising into say winter, you have your accessory pigments so like your carotenoids, maybe your xanthophils, things like that, that will reflect other colors. Um, when they stop working, that's when the leaf will eventually die. Okay. All right. Now, our electrons are going to journey through, remember what's known as our ETC, okay, our electron transport chain, until it goes to our chlorophyll A protein, which is known as your photosystem 1. Remember, photosystem 2 was discovered first. That's the name of this big guy. And then photosystem 1 was actually, or sorry, discovered second, discovered first, and that's the second protein here. Now, I want you to add a couple new names. This specific protein is known as a PQ. 
electrons going to go to him first, and we're going to start to lose energy along the way. So we're kind of dropping down. This big guy is known as the B6F complex, and then the next little protein is known as the PC. So as the electron is losing energy, okay, we're able to actually grab some extra hydrogen ions out in the stroma area and bring them in to what's known as the lumen. So here's another new word for you. So the lumen is the actual inside of our thylakoid membrane. So we're going to take these hydrogen ions from the outside as well as from the water, and we're going to blow this guy up almost like a balloon. So we're filling him up, filling him up. Now these hydrogen ions, remember, are going to journey on over into what's known as the ATP synthase. Now this guy actually turns like a pinwheel. So he actually turns around and generates energy. And as these guys are going from a high concentration inside here to a low concentration outside, they're able to connect ADP with a lonely phosphate to create our ATP. So hence his name, ATP synthase, is generating ATP. And just remember, it's actually from the hydrogen ions. Now also remember that our little electron, as he loses energy, loses energy, is going to need to get pumped up again. And so by the time we hit that second protein, the photosystem one, we reignite it with more sunlight, do our little ping pong reaction, and now this guy has a lot of energy that we can now harness. And that harness energy, when he gets shot out, actually connects together this molecule known as NAD with some hydrogen ions and then in turn creates what's known as NADPH, which again is another electron carrier. This process of creating electrons and harnessing them is actually known as photophorization. All right, so here's our big picture. We've seen this before and we've talked about this in some of our previous lectures. But I want to remind you, this is a process that we just talked about. We created ATP, NADPH as some products of the light reaction as well as oxygen. The oxygen will eventually travel on over to the mitochondria with our glucose to aid in what's known as cell respiration. The ATP and NADPH, which we're going to talk about right now, is going to join in with the stroma, the actually empty fluid area of the chloroplast, and go through what's known as a dark reaction. This is also known as the light independent reaction because we don't actually need sunlight in order for this to happen. So let's go ahead and talk about this cycle here. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and talk about what happens with this energy we just created. This is actually known as the Kelvin cycle. Again, no sunlight is actually required for this. It does happen inside the stroma area, which, remember, is the empty spot of that chloroplast. And this is also known as a light independent reaction. Now, our players in this theatrical game here is your CO2. We've also got our ATP and then our NADPH. These guys are going to go into our Calvin cycle, which again is named after Melvin Calvin in the 1940s. And they're going to go through this cycle. So first we're going to go through what's known as carbon fixation where we're going to fix the carbon. So we're going to come in with six molecules of CO2, hence our formula, C6, or the six CO2 molecules from photosynthesis. And just think about this as one of these carbon. Now, in order to actually start the flow of our cycle, we're going to need an extra helper that's known as RUBP. He is a type of enzyme. He is also um, known famously as Rubisco. And he, we're going to need six of these guys, and he is a five-carbon molecule. So when you do simple math and you add one plus five, you end up getting a six-carbon molecule. But you need to consider the fact that we came in with six of each of these. So six times one is going to be our six-carbon. But 6 times 5 is actually 30. So then you have 30 carbons as well that get put together. So the 6 and 30 carbons actually end up reforming a 36 carbon molecule frame that gets built into this 12 
three carbon molecule. Bear with me here, guys. Simple math. So 6 and 30 